Okay, so let's get right into the balance sheet. So before we actually talk about every single line item on the balance sheet, it's important to know overall exactly what you're doing when you're looking at a balance sheet. So a balance sheet is really going to give you a description of all of the assets, all of the liabilities, and the equity that you have. Now, let's define each one of those individually. First of all, the assets are just everything that you own, liabilities being everything that you owe, and equity is whatever's left over at the end of the day that is actually yours. So we'll get into uh, a little more detail on this momentarily, but you can also rewrite this formula by switching it around. So if you remember, uh, going back to some of the high school math you may have learned, if you want to isolate assets on the left-hand side, you need to bring liabilities over to the right hand side in order to do that you want to add liabilities over here so what you get is assets equals equity plus liabilities okay now to go into a little more as to what we mean exactly let's imagine that you own a house so this house is worth three hundred thousand dollars the asset itself we would call the house now the whole house is worth $300,000, but that doesn't necessarily mean what is attributable to you is the full $300,000 because you may have taken a mortgage out on the house or effectively a loan out to buy the house. So if you took a loan of $200,000 out to buy the house, then out of the $300,000, $200,000 of that house is not really yours. So what this actually implies then is that you put down $100,000 when you bought the house. And so out of the $300,000 value of the asset or the house, $200,000 of that is a loan that you took out and $100,000 of that is actually yours. So the asset value minus the liability is equal to the equity portion. And you can think of the equity portion as what's really left over and your claim to the asset. Okay, so unfortunately, there is a, something I should note here, which is like in most of finance, there are always four or five different words that mean the same thing. When it comes to equity, you should keep in mind that net worth, shareholders equity, owner's equity, and just plain equity all mean the same thing. Occasionally, they also call it book value when it comes to corporations. So book value, shareholders equity, owners equity, net worth, all of those terms mean the same thing. And now let's step into the corporation's approach to the balance sheet. Okay, so a balance sheet for the ABC company. We're going to take a look at a fictitious balance sheet here and kind of walk through the line items to really... Uh, hone in on what exactly you need to be looking for when some of these ratio questions come up. And we'll get into the ratios momentarily. First of all, we're going to start out with the assets. So the assets here are broken up into current assets and long-term or what's also known as fixed assets. Now, the current assets are ordered uh, in a very specific order. They start from what's the most liquid or the most easy, easily uh, transferred into cash um, down to the least liquid. So for example, the first line item that you typically find in a balance sheet is what's called the cash and cash equivalents. This would literally just be the cash that a company would have in its bank account or maybe invested in some money market securities. Next, we have what's called accounts receivable. Now accounts receivable are kind of like what the name implies. So it's money that you should be expecting to receive in the future. So this would be if customers bought something from you, but they haven't paid you quite yet. Maybe they're going to pay you within a week or two. That would fall under an account receivable. The next one is inventory. Inventory should be pretty straightforward. Um, this is just uh, a number that goes in there when you build or buy your inventory. Um, and then other assets is uh, just kind of a grab all um, line item where there isn't enough maybe to break out 
individual line items. So a bunch of things may come together and go under a line called other assets. This one really doesn't get a lot of focus on any of the tests, however, so we probably won't talk much about it other than this. Okay, so then once we have all of these um, assets summed up, we have the total current assets number, which is 210 million in this case. And now let's move down to long-term or fixed assets. Okay, so long-term and or fixed assets usually just comprise of um, one or two things. Um, the main component here that you're likely going to see or you'll be tested on would be property, plant, and equipment, or what's also called um, sometimes just equipment, machinery. Um, it could have a few different names, but the main idea here is that these are assets that are meant to be on the balance sheet for a long period of time. The current assets and long-term assets are differentiated by the fact that current assets are only expected to be on the balance sheet for a period of 12 months or less. So your cash and cash equivalents aren't always going to be $40 million. They may go up and down, and that's probably going to happen within a 12-month period. Whereas the property, plant, and equipment that a business may own is quite likely not to change as frequently. You're probably not going to buy and sell factories every year or every month. So this number is a little more static um, and fixed. The, the next item here, intangible assets. So intangible assets are assets such as copyrights, trademarks, patents, anything that doesn't really have a, a physical presence, but may have some value for the corporation. Okay, and then we total the long-term assets. And when we sum the long-term assets and the total current assets, we get the total assets generally. Okay, so next on the balance sheet, we're going to look at the liabilities section. So similar to the assets section, you'll see that liabilities have a current liabilities and a long-term liabilities section. The logic here is very similar to current assets and long-term assets. So we're going to start with accounts payable. Accounts payable is basically the direct opposite of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, remember, were uh, money was money that was owed to you from someone else. Accounts payable represent money that you owe to someone else. So, for example, you may have purchased a bunch of inventory from a supplier that you have. However, you didn't pay for the inventory and maybe you expect to pay next week or in two weeks. If you have some unpaid item on your books that you haven't paid for yet, it goes under the accounts payable as long as you're expecting to pay them back within a year. And usually this is a, a very short term item. So it's usually within a few weeks or a few months. Uh, next up is interest payable. So this would be any type of interest expense that may be due and you just haven't paid it yet. So that's what this is. Any type of payable item you're gonna notice is something that you owe. So interest, you may owe interest. Taxes, similar to interest payable, you owe taxes that you haven't paid yet. And this is just um, indicating, since it's a current liability, that these are taxes that you are going to be expected to pay within the next 12 months. Okay, so this last item here, the current obligations of long-term debt, what this represents is the portion of your total debt that's going to be required to be paid within a 12-month period. So you'll see down here it says 10-year bank loan. So of course, this is a long-term liability because it's over 10 years. However, of the 70 million in long-term, there's another 5 million that may perhaps have been due on a, on a yearly basis, or maybe they just required 5 million to be paid up front. Either way, this is something that has to be paid within the next 12 months. So it falls under the current portion or current obligations of long-term debt. Okay, um, so below we sum up the total current liabilities to get 35 million here. That's just a sum of all the current liabilities here similar to the current assets, which is a sum of all the current assets here. Okay, long-term liabilities, we kind of just touched on this, but 
anything that's longer than one year or due more than one year from now is going to fall under a long-term liability because remember liabilities are um, monies that you owe so a 10-year bank loan is money that you owe back to the bank because it's um, not due for 10 years it falls under a long-term liability now in terms of other long-term liabilities similar to other assets where we indicated up here this other long-term liabilities it may just be a group of miscellaneous liabilities um, money that you owe to others that may be too small to put on individual line items so they just group them together in other long-term liabilities okay so here you see there's a total of 80 million that's a 70 plus 10 and then the total liabilities is the sum of the 80 million plus the 35 million okay so now we're going to move on to the shareholder equity section so before we get into that just take a step back and think about how you start a business so the only way to start a business is by infusing your business with some cash that cash needs to either come from one of two places one it can come from investors which would be coming through equity and this is investors putting cash in your business or it's yourself putting cash in your business either way it's cash that goes into your business that you may or may not get back the second would be through loans and loans we touched on in the liabilities section of the balance sheet so we've already kind of done that part the liabilities are money that you expect to get back over time because you have a contractual obligation with the person who lends you money um, to pay them back okay so the first part of the equity section we see here is a six percent preferred convertible one hundred dollar par value two hundred fifty thousand shares outstanding so this is preferred stock ten million dollars worth and so ten million dollars of the company's equity has come from preferred stock investors or preferred equity investors um, the next two line items um, basically go together common stock and paid in capital are two line items that represent the money that comes in from investors that are investing in common stock only so when you sell common shares whether it's through an IPO or through a secondary offering through your company this uh, the money is going to come in and hit these two line items now the common stock line item um, is always the smaller one and it's there's accounting reasons as to why this shows up the way it does we're not going to get into that here it's not really relevant for what you're going to need to do to to take the test however you should just know that it's split up whenever you do an IPO or a secondary offering between common stock and paid in capital and paid in capital usually gets the large majority of the amount that is raised okay the next one is retained earnings so retained earnings represent all of the income that you've accumulated over the years that you've kept in the business so it looks like the company over time has accumulated 85 million dollars worth of profit or net income and they've kept that in the business over time so that's also going to contribute to the company's equity because that's like they have money that they they took from the business after making a profit and instead of giving it back to shareholders they just plowed it back into the company lastly here we have treasury stock you'll notice that this number is in brackets anytime you see a number in brackets in accounting terms it usually means it's a negative number so the reason why treasury stock is a negative number is because this represents shares that have been repurchased from uh, investors and so you can see they've repurchased 10 million dollars worth of stock from investors if you're going to buy out your investors you're naturally going to shrink the total amount of money invested by investors and therefore that is why we see a negative number here so the 10 million dollars is actually subtracting from the total amount of money that's invested uh, invested by investors in the equity section okay and one last thing we want to point out with treasury stock we get this question all the time which is that treasury stock has absolutely nothing to do with the federal government at this point you've probably seen treasury bonds treasury bonds 
are bonds issued by the U.S. federal government. Treasury stock has uh, absolutely zero to do with the federal government. It's just it just happens to be what accountants called um, stock that a company has bought back over time. Okay, so next we look at total shareholder equity. So net worth, basically we're adding up all of these numbers and remember we're subtracting the 10 million. So you end up with 185 million. And this goes back to our original equation on the previous slide. You should always double check to see that your total assets minus your total liabilities equals your shareholder equity because assets minus liabilities equals equity. So 300 minus 115 gets you 185. Or the other equation, which we said, assets is equal to shareholders equity or equity plus liabilities. So 185 plus 115 is equal to 300.